porosity and permeability of sediments. Here we go. You will often see the Reed Museum has a lot of questions like this. Tubes set up with different types of sediment in them. Uh, you see two different examples here and water even flowing through or flowing upward. Okay, so let's um, look at some of this. So first, I have these two here. Smaller beads, larger beads. Which two will drain faster? If you pour the same amount of water into each, which would drain out the fastest into the bottom? And the answer is going to be this one. Okay, the larger one will drain faster. This is measuring permeability. Permeability is water flowing through sediment. How easily water flows through sediment. High permeability, water flows easily. Low permeability, it goes slower. Okay, and a key thing to permeability, the larger the sediment, the higher the permeability, or the larger the sediment is, the faster water goes through. And then the converse is true, the smaller it is, the slower it goes through, therefore the lower permeability. This, these are things you just need to buckle down and get it in your brain and study. Uh, so of these three, A, B, and C, which would have the highest permeability? Water flows through the fastest. It would be this one, the larger sediments, and the water would go through slowest on the smaller sediment one. Know that. Uh, what I want to point out here is shows another diagram of a cross section looking down through the through um, the soil, and what you have is a water table here. It has a label here: impermeable red bedrock. Impermeable means water cannot move through it. So some things you may know to be impermeable, uh, concrete, pavement, you know, uh, your kitchen counter is pretty impermeable, water does not go through, and uh, a lot of times bedrock can be pretty impermeable, and that kind of stops the water table, the, the groundwater, I'm sorry, from going um, any further down. Now we're on to porosity, okay? I have found over the years porosity and permeability, kids really get them confused. And the way, to not, the way to know all of these things is just to study them and make sure you know them. You're probably going to get them mixed up if you don't put that time in. So porosity is how much pore space or empty space is between the sediment. In these uh, three examples, it's shown by the white. That's the empty spaces here, okay, is the white space here. So uh, this is, uh, is, it also refers to how much water the sediment can hold or store because when water goes in here, that's where it's going to go. It's going to go in those open spaces. All right, so then another way to look at porosity. So this here is going to have the lowest porosity, the unsorted nature of it. All the smaller ones fit in between the larger ones. You can see there's much less white space here. So this has the lowest porosity of these three. Now, A and B, check this out. They have the same porosity, okay, because within each they're really well sorted, which means they're all uh, the same size within each, and they're really well rounded, okay. Uh, that's important. Now, I put this on here, not obvious. It is not obvious. You can't look at it. So you have to just commit this to memory, okay? Um, here is a question that we've seen in the past. A, B, and C, notice they're all really well, uh, really well sorted. They're all the same size within each uh, container, and they're all really well rounded. They'd be spherical in the real world, in the three-dimensional world. And the answer here is to which best describes the porosity of these samples. Now, some people find this to be like a trick question. It's not really a trick question. It's just the way that it is. Um, and the answer is all three samples have the same porosity. That's important. Make sure you know it. 